for when they, yeah, the original source had it in it, I, mm -hmm. I do believe. But that's just my theory. Look, it's a theory. And you have to evaluate if you think that's a good theory. You see, the fact that we have an election, which is odd, an election which is, you will admit, basically meaningless. I mean, to put a, a 12th apostle who doesn't do anything in the whole history that we're in, aware of into the scheme, and to miss the election of the person who does do something, even in this book, seems odd. So to my mind, it was just kind of the person said, oh, look, it would be like Nixon didn't like the way the history was. Uh, look, take that out, put this in. So they wouldn't do that. Yeah, I said, when you have parties in struggle, ideological struggle, they would do that, unfortunately. Hey, watch what happens when I leave Cal State Long Beach. I'll be written out. It'll be like I was never here. <laughs> you know, that's what happens to, you know, if your adversaries or people who want to promote them. So this is how everybody gets written out. Watch what happens to Michael Eisner at Disney when he goes. He's history, man. And he probably wouldn't even make the history books. I mean, Trotsky, they even, they even ran him down to Mexico and killed him. They were so worked up about him. So yeah, the victors write the history. I gotta keep moving, guys. I know the questions are good, but let me, I'm getting nowhere. Apologize. Okay, so we have another odd situation where Mary, the mother of, we assume it's the God, or at least of James, Simon, Jude, and Josie's, if it's not of God, is another odd transformation occurs and we get a third Mary or a fourth Mary by a fifth Mary. We've got Mary Magdalene, we've got Mary the mother of James and John in the Gospels, we've got Mary the mother of Hosea, Josie's, and oh we've got, so you start looking at the number of Marys in the Gospels. And now we've got another one we never heard of, Mary the mother of John and Mark. I compress all these Marys, except for Mary Magdalene. I compress all these Marys into one Mary. Mary, the mother of God. Mary, the mother of Jesus. And what I say is going on here is the editors later are having problems with the doctrines relating to her status. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that Mary had other children. They refer to her as Mother Jesus, and then they refer to the brothers of the Lord. But I have one question that's troubling. Wait, 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 you lost me with that question. In the Bible, they refer to Mary as the mother of Jesus, but they never refer to that Mary as having other children. They only refer to... Well, we don't argue that, but that's a start with Jesus' point, but you're wrong. Okay. They talk about Mary, the mother of uh, James, Josephs, uh, Salome, and who are, who are the brothers of um, Jesus in, that, uh, in, the, in those other uh, uh, presentations. I have a question. Or it says Mary and his brothers came to him. So, in fact, it definitely has Mary. The, it also has um, uh, Mary, the sister of her own sister Mary, uh, the wife. Uh, so, only in the Gospel of John, I think, do you not have Mary related to the brothers. Because the Gospel of John has separated them out into two Marys. That's what I'm saying. You get a multiplication of Marys. So there, there's a double Mary in John. Anyway, just this is beyond where we are. You know, you got too many questions. That's fine. I'm not way to, You got too many questions, but I'm gonna take your question, which is good. But I gotta move. Don't forget. So give me your question so I can move. Um, at the at the foot of the cross, um, John Jesus tells John, "This is your mother, basically, to take care of her." Yeah. She had other children. You know that in the Jewish faith, as long, as well as like in my faith, the children have to take care of her, their own parents. So why would Jesus tell John? to take care of Mary if she had other children. It says, take That's him into your own, take her into your own house. I've analyzed that in my James, the brother of Jesus book, and I can't remember the whole analysis. Those kind of questions, we're gonna to have to come to the office because it's really off the topic here. It's gonna, you know, I know you're full of these questions, but I'd appreciate it if you read James, the brother of Jesus, and then come with the questions, because most of that I've gone into the best I can in great detail, and trying to give the, um, Analysis on one foot would be uh, would be um, pretty difficult. I think part of it is that um, the disciple Jesus loved. Most people assume is John, but um, a lot of other people think is actually James. And there's also in the apocryphal gospels, 
J Jesus kissing James on the mouth. And it's a very complicated story, and therefore, I, you know, it can't be done on one foot. There. And you, you tend to take the Gospels at face value. And um, most academics, just like I, don't take them to face value. But we've been over this ground, and I really got to keep moving. I apologize to you. It's a good question, but it would take a whole, like, a whole class probably to answer. I'm not trying to fob it off, but it's a very complicated thing. And I think I've done it in a chapter. Look up, um, look up uh, in my index in that book, and you should find some things about that. Any case, coming back. So we have a new character, Mary, the mother of John Mark. Uh, she's just thrown, called attention to how many Marys there really are again. And now we have another Mary. And as I said, in my theories, I collapse them into one basic Mary. If it's a mother of, it's mother of either the Jesus or the brothers. And it's not surprising, therefore, that someone would go to her house to leave a message for James, isn't it? Just that the writer doesn't want to go further than that. The writer doesn't want to tell us these family relations because the writer is a Paulinist and is not happy with the family leadership of the early church. It's like Islam. If you're familiar with Islam, the, the Ali party, the family party is against the Sunni party, the more like the consensus uh, companions, apostles party. And you can watch how Islam developed in a very similar manner that the consensus Sunni party wins out over the family party, party, the Ali Shiite party. But they're still fighting today. The only problem with Christianity today, we don't have any Jamesians left except here in this room. Uh, but it turns out the Dead Sea Scrolls, I think, have come along to uh, restore that balance. And that, that's going to be a uh, and it, look, 10 years ago, no one even heard the name James. I was at this conference, and people were saying, and uh, Jesus and his brother James, as if it was just common knowledge. So in 10 years, we've gone that far in, 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 in this. Uh, promoting the importance of James to, in the consciousness of people. And I think we, all, we started right here at Cal State Long Beach. So I'm not trying to be uh, right in your classes, right here. It's amazing how far those things can, can, can go. You'd be amazed. And uh, I can assure you, 20 years ago, no one spoke about this character. It was totally unknown. 10 beginning to be known. And now everybody knows that we've so uh, it's uh, quite a quite a uh, movement. And the ossuary, of course, has just pushed it forward, even though it's a, a fake ossuary. But the reason that it came into existence is because we had already started talking about James, and so the forger said, "Oh, hey, we can we can sell that ossuary for big money now." So off they went and produced it. We had a lecture on the ossuary there at the conference, and uh, the Israeli authorities who had investigated were absolutely livid at the.